Hey, everybody, and welcome to Taste and See. This is Andrew here with special guest Jeff Parks. Hey, everybody. It's hey, me. I love Jeff. He is the man. Love and, you too, bro. Um, he is. Uh, he has his own podcast uh, called. What's it called, Jeff? It's called Jesus Didn't Speak English. Yeah, and it's, I didn't ask you because I forgot. I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he has a he has a podcast, and he's a good friend. And um, I wanted to bring him on here because. Uh, he is somebody that, you know, we talk about taste and see. We talk about two things. We talk about food experiences and we talk about how we can experience God mm. um, in a very real way. And um, Jeff is somebody that when he talks about God, he talks about a concept. He talks about something in scripture. It is a like uh, a five course meal. OK, <laughs> it is no it, appetizers here, buddy. No, no. I, but I mean, I think like you have appetizers built in, mm, like it all mm. comes out at the same time. Um, yes. But you're just like, boom, you know, and it's like, whoa. And you walk away and you're like, whoa, oh, man. I, I just asked for like a stick of gum. Yeah, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Um, but uh, well, we're, we're going to do a segment called Favorite Foods. Mm. And um, and we'll be right back with you in a moment. Roll that segment. All right. Favorite foods. Jeff, what, yes. what is the favorite food as a category, a type of food? What are we talking about today? So one of my favorite uh, culinary delights, especially in South Jersey, is the sub. The sub. The sub, which some people would say a hoagie, and I would say, you're wrong. It's a sub. Mm. But I like subs. And yeah. uh, specifically, the inner the innards of a sub aren't as important to me. The innards. The innards. The inside, you know, it can be a chicken parm. It could be an Italian. It can be like a, whatever you want to put in there. Roast beef. I don't care. The most important part of a sub is the bread. It's the bread. It's the bread. Bro. Okay. So let's be real clear. The favorite food we're talking about is not a sub. It's, it's bread. It's really the bread. It's the bread. Yes, it's the bread. Okay. What, what makes, what makes a good hoagie bread? Okay. So to you? for me, all right. My favorite type of hoagie bread is it's got to be, there's got to be a good crust on it on the outside. And, uh, you know, enough that no matter what innards are in there, that are going to soak into the bread that it's still going to maintain its structural integrity. Mm. So like Primo's hoagies. Okay. Primo's is good. Okay. They've got a good, like you can smack that thing on the table and it'll knock, knock. You know what I mean, <laughs> not enough to break a, like a filling, Dude, but it's got some structure, yes, but it's got to have some, some hold. Yeah. That's the best bread. And anybody else, you know, you can have your opinion, but. Okay. That's wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. I have had some incredible experiences with hoagies. In the first episode, I don't know if you listened to it, the first ever episode of Taste and See, um, it was about a place in Princeton, New Jersey called Hoagie Haven. And they have some like incredible, incredible hoagies. If we're, if we are ranking like tier, okay. I'd say, pre, I'd say Primo's is A, okay. A tier. Yes. Wawa's is slipping. It's more like C tier. I was going to say D, but then D? I'll, okay, I'll allow okay. C. I'll allow C. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's becoming too mainstream. You know, I think that's, yeah. that's the distinction once, yeah. you know, anyway. They, they, you know, like somehow, sometimes like businesses, big businesses, they're like, we can make these three tweaks and it'll increase our profit by 10%. And that's where it goes wrong. Yeah. When you start to say, hey, this is how we can make more money. Yeah. You start to lose the yeah, why of what you're doing. We're going to remove two millimeters of bread. Oh, the bread thickness has gone down. Like I said in another episode that um, like if you went to Home Depot, you know, they have different size like PVC pipes. Yes. Back in the day, like you need a big PVC pipe. <laughs> Pipe to fit, just to give you a picture to fit that that Wawa hoagie in. Now it's like that little two inch pipe. You're like, it's true, Whoop, you know, true. like they're gone. Like it's it's. But um, hoagie it's how Haven, the mighty have fallen. Yeah, hoagie Haven is S tier. Okay, and their rolls. Um, it's the whole experience, the innards. Okay, as you have so beautifully <laughs> described, the innards are incredible as well. But the rolls, 
they, you know, like you do, you're right. You need a good roll that can Foundation. like go the distance. It's true. Um, I like fresh baked bread too. Okay. Bridget makes sourdough. Nice. Um, and dude, some sourdough bread, toast it, some butter. Mm. And if you want to even go the extra mile, put a little honey on it, butter and honey on sourdough bread. I got to ask, do you drink milk with the honey? Cause yeah. if you haven't, <laughs> so the Bible says milk and honey, like yeah. flowing. Yeah. Bro. It is good. Have you ever, have you ever no, had it? I don't think, oh. I, I don't think I've ever, like, what do you do? The you next just, time, like, no, no, just or? like, just have like a glass of milk with your sourdough and honey okay, okay. and it's all warm. Yeah. The, the butter is all melty in there. Yeah. And the honey. And when that. you drink it with milk, I tell you, it's like. Milk does that for a lot of things like pasta, you ever, like red sauce. Like, yeah. Like my you, wife does that weird stuff. I'm not into oh, that part. Oh, okay. But, All right. So you have limits. <laughs> but I tell you, I don't know what it is about milk and honey. The first time I, I had the pairing, I was like, this is wild. Like, I understand why the Lord is putting these two <laughs> things scripture, together. Yeah. Like, it's a really good combo. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, but I like, I like some good bread. Bread is bread is tasty. Back on the hoagie um, yes. front, I had a recent development. I don't know if I told you about this, but I can't eat eggs, really, or any egg product. And you you just saw I got chickens you in do. my backyard. That's a travesty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's painful, <laughs> and um, like not even mayo. I can't have mayo. Really? So like most good spreads, chipotle sauce out. Wow. Um, can't have like like breakfast is ruined. Yeah. Um, and so when I went to Wawa recently. It's like, well, what do I get for breakfast? You know, I'm stuck. And I'm then, still stuck on you got an, an egg allergy now. Yeah, it's like oh. it's it's not like um it's not like a, an allergy where you can't breathe. You know, it's yeah, not no. like that, but it's an intolerance. So I get Ugh. super nauseous for a couple hours after. Like Ugh. it's really bad. And um and but that's like all mayo. Like even in baked goods, it's correct? Like, like I had ice cream that had egg yolk in it. Ugh. Nauseous, boom. Um and like so I go to Wawa. And I like my, what I like on my subs, I like chipotle and mayo. Like nice. I like them sauces, but they're all, it's egg. It's, it's egg based. Chick-fil-A sauce. Egg. 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 That's egg, bro. Egg. It's everywhere. You know? So yeah, it's really, it's really a bummer. Wow. Um, so I'm still, I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, how, how to, to live how, now, how to live with this. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do I live? <laughs> like people have such like so many more serious, um, serious like issues in life that are like, I have to relearn how to live. And I'm over here, Ugh, egg, I have to relearn how to live. I mean, um, but it is annoying. It's very yeah. annoying. So much is based on egg. Wow. But, um, yeah. You have any other thoughts on bread, uh, Jeff, before we move on? I, I really, do, I really, I think bread, we sleep on it a little bit, you know? Yeah. And it's just like a commonplace thing. Cause it's, you know, it's, we use it as foundation for a lot of things, sandwiches, uh, like most it's, it's a common theme in scripture too, bread. Like that this was probably what sustained most people throughout history was bread. Mm. And like we, as Americans, we have like so many other things to sustain ourselves with yes. that we don't like value just like bread by itself. Like, oh yeah, this is a really good bread. Yeah. And the different types of bread, there's like, you know, traditional sliced bread, there's like home baked breads, non, you know. Oh, I like non. Non is good. Non's yeah. good stuff. Pita, all the different things <laughs> that there's, this is like, you know, there's a lot there, but. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. Back. I, I literally just thought um, yesterday I made a salad for lunch mm. and, you know, it's very cold here yes. outside. Um and we did a big garden. I grew kale and all nice. kinds of stuff this summer. And obviously all that stuff is out of season now, especially mm. like tomatoes and stuff. So I'm making a yes. salad. I've got tomatoes. I have spinach. Mm. I have various lettuce, lettuce and lettuce eye. Um, and mm. I was just standing there. I was thinking to myself, I was like, wow, you know, we are blessed in this period of time where it's like, Oh, it's out of season for you guys. Well, it's just going to be shipped to all the supermarkets around you and you can just go to the store and just buy whatever you want. Oh man. When what you were saying is there is periods of time in history where it bread was like it, you know? Like the story of um of the widow and her son who they had just a little bit of flour and oil left <laughs> and like that what sustained them the meal was hey, we're going to make some bread. Like oh man. Right. <laughs> There's so much I want to say, but like, I gotta, I gotta keep it in check. So I'm just going to say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's keep true. It, keep it's it in true. check. Um, it's true, man. So yeah, Brad, if you're listening to the podcast, whether you're on YouTube or Spotify um, or anywhere else, um, 
Let us know, because I think on Spotify, I got the q and I'm going to put a QA and a up. What's your favorite bread? If you're on YouTube, put it in the comments. Let us know. I want to know what kind of bread you're all about. Um, cause, and I'd also love to like try some new bread. Like, is there a, a bread I don't know about? Mm. You know, I want to try it. I found a really easy recipe. It's called peasant bread oh. from um, TikTok, actually. TikTok has everything. I will try to remember and I'll, I'll, sh- I'll shoot you the recipe. It's super easy yeah. to make. You don't have to knead it. It's like very basic ingredients and it makes like a pretty, it's not sourdough. It's not as dense, but you know, it's a pretty good. And it, you only need like four or five hours to do it. Hmm. Cool. And peasant you too bread. can make bread. Peasant bread. Yeah. I like it. It's where I live. Everybody make peasant bread. Well, as you know, on the podcast, we do two things here, right? We talk about food experiences. Um, because the podcast is called Taste and See, and that comes out of Psalm 34, verse 8, which says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And um, there is so much beautiful truth in the fact that just like a, a good meal or a good food, we were talking about bread just a moment ago. We we're like, oh, man, you know, I, it's about the bread. The bread needs to be good. And it's like, oh, it's got all these qualities and you experience it. And it's like, oh, um, in that same way, God invites us. He invites us to experience and enjoy him, to taste and see that he is good. And so um, we talk about food and then we talk about something um, from scripture, some kind of uh, topic or thing. And and um, I'm excited because uh, Jeff here, I asked him, what is he, what are you passionate about? What's something that's on your heart? And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the grace of God. Yes. Yeah. So Jeff. Yeah. Just like I, you know, I don't know exactly how you want to jump into this, but um, with both feet, with both Just feet, jumping right in, <laughs> jumping We're right, jump in the deep end. Um, but um, kind of just give me, give me the lowdown on um, hmm. God's grace as like foundational as um, as the concept, as the idea, bigger picture. I think is what yes. you're going to talk about yes. first, like the bigger picture of of God's grace. Well, first we got to go to the text. So text is important. Um, the words for grace. Okay. So big languages in our faith are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, right? Yeah. Because Bible is written in different parts in those different languages. So um, I think a lot of Christians might say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that grace is probably a new Testament thing, mm-hmm. right? They would yeah, lean more towards that. Yeah, assume that it's like, like it's, it's a new out of nowhere. It's yeah, no, a new yeah, no. It's actually um, it's all over the Old Testament, and um, so uh, I guess I'll go that way first. So the word for grace in Hebrew is chen. It's got that lovely chet in the beginning, uh, so you yeah. got to get it in the back of your throat. Chen. Okay. So chen is used prolifically in one idiom, like an idiomatic expression, a thing that Jewish people say in the Bible a lot. If I have found favor in your eyes, which is essentially a way to say, if you like me, mm. okay? Because that's like in modern Hebrew, it's still the same exact phrase that this person finds favor in my eyes, which translates human wise to, I like that person. Mm. Okay. But it's used, uh, it's translated in the KJV like 69 times, this word chen, and most of it is as favor and grace, all right? Mm-hmm. So grace is the lion's share and then close behind is favor. The way that that comes into being is from a verb, which is chanan, and that is found um, in one of my favorite examples in the high priestly blessing, Mm -hmm. okay? So in the second line, there's three lines in the high priestly blessing. This is in number six, where God says, this is how I want my children blessed. And he says, Mm -hmm. Moses, tell Aaron this. If you look, all right, so there's three lines. Uh, The first one this is like a clear picture. We, we did this in um, the House of Victory, um, like in the first year that we were doing it. We spent the summer and we took apart this blessing one line each month because we met first of the month. If you look at that, though, it's like a clear picture of the Godhead in Old Testament scripture. Mm. And each of those lines in the blessing really line up with the way that God expresses himself through that aspect of who he is. And so I'm going to jump into the second one. If you want to do more of that research, do more of that research because there's a lot there. The second line says, and may the Lord make his face to shine on you Mm -hmm. and be gracious to you. Mm. Okay. So if you look up the etymology, which is my favorite area of study. Okay. It's Mm. the roots, down in the roots. Yeah. Hanan means to have a superior 
person or being something, but it's clearly the distinction between superior and inferior. Bend down to the inferior. Mm. Okay. And like in our solar system and in our planet, light is life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so Jesus, the second line um, comes down. He is the light of the world. He's bringing life into us and he stoops down to us Mm. and shows favor to us. And Literally this whole action, all right? So I'm giving all this backstory to say this, that he is stepping down, like this is words literally out of the gospels and stuff that he took on humanity, that he Mm -hmm. stepped down into us to be the grace that we stand in. Yeah. So there's that in the Hebrew. The Greek word is charis, which comes uh, from a different word, which is uh, chareo, which is to, um, essentially it's like health and life. It's like a common greeting, even in ancient Greek is hiere, which is like, hey, health to you which we do even today. We say the same sentiments. We just do it differently in English or whatever. Most often though, in the Septuagint, the Greek Old Testament, charis is translated and put in the place of chen. So that's how they're linguistically related. So all that to say in Romans 5, um, 1 and 2, well, really in the second verse, Paul says that through Jesus and through faith in Jesus and what he's done, we stand in grace Mm. before God, that we stand really in what he stood in. Mm -hmm. And so like, this is the foundational aspect and the idea of what grace is to us is us. Like I know, and well, I don't know, but I would assume that you have heard grace described as unmerited favor, right? Yeah. Correct. Cause it is, Mm -hmm. but really um, that it's uh, by having faith in Jesus and who he is and what he did and how he did it, that we have been credited what he did by standing in our place. Mm. And so now we are standing in his place. Yeah. When Does it says in the new Testament, it says in Christ. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So essentially that, that, that grace is uh, this covering that Jesus took our place. And now we are credited into his place in the eyes of the Lord. And that it's in his sight mm. that we have this amicability that we could even stand in God's presence. And like the idea All right, so without getting too crazy into it, under the old law with the temple, um, only one person once a year could go and stand in the presence of God. Yeah. And that's after spilling a lot of blood in the specific sacrifice for Yom Kippur, for Mm -hmm. the Day of Atonement. This is like the same presence of God that killed two people Mm. for getting too close. They were happy. Like they were just celebrating and they brought fire and incense and they thought like this was cool and they get close to the tent of meeting. And then the holy presence of the Lord comes out and consumes them. Mm. And like, if you don't understand why, that can be like pretty drastic. And like, what? Why? Why is that? Because like, dang, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, what I mean? it seems a little like it seems Whoa. like an overkill. Yeah, you know. But then the Lord says through Moses after that, this is done because I will be kept holy by those who are closest to me. Mm. And like, you can hear that echo in the Lord's prayer: "May your name be kept holy." Who does yeah. that? We do that. Yeah, we're the ones who are representatives of the Lord's name by being closest to him. And so this idea that we can even stand in his presence is because of what Jesus did by standing in our place. Yeah. And so it's this kind of like exchange, I guess, in in the fact that like he took our place because we've all deserved the cross. And now this Holy Spirit, which should be ripping us apart from the inside out, isn't doing that. Yeah. Because we're covered by what Jesus did and yeah. by the grace that he did. And um yeah. So like basically that. Yeah. yeah we measure up to yes. God's standard <laughs> because of what Christ has done, because he measured up in a yes. way that we never could on our own. Yes. Um, yeah. That is, that is super powerful. And, um, you know, I've always thought of, uh, not always thought of, but I've in my, <laughs> you're like, man, whatever. Yeah, we, um, well, we, in yes. my, in my studies of grace, you know, one of the things that a lot of the, um, uh, Greek dictionaries and, you know, um, they talk about, um, they give this picture of the, uh, the grace of God is God extending himself on behalf of mankind. Absolutely. Extending himself. Yes. And it's like, and it's like in exerting himself, like he, 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 um, it's almost like, now correct me if I'm wrong, but it's almost like I picture you're trying to move. Okay. Your mm. house, like, like, I, I've moved three times or three, three times. Yeah. Three times in the last like four years. Oh. Okay. 
it is a lot of work to move. It really is. And culturally, it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I mean, if you can help me, but I don't <laughs> want to put you out. And everybody's like the guy with the truck, you know, that hates being the guy with the truck. You know? On moving day, it's right? the worst thing to have is the truck. Cause yeah, you're like, dang you're it, like, I'm going to get roped into you're this. like, crap. Ugh. But it's like the guy with the truck, right? And it's like, but you as the person moving, you're in deep need. You're in, you're in need. Mm. And this picture of God's grace is he's, ex, he extends himself. And while in culturally we were like, you know, I don't want to ask too much of people. I don't want to do this. And so it's like, it's almost like you didn't even ask God for, for help, but he shows up with his truck That's true. and, and he does, he like, he does all the work. He makes, he makes it happen. And he goes above and beyond what you could ever have even asked or expected. And he just put himself out to take care of you and to meet your need. And now on a grander mm. scale, that's what God did as he sent his son to this earth, to True. put on flesh, to be born, um, to live the life we couldn't live, to do what we couldn't do, to die the death we should have died, um, to pay for our sins, to be the perfect sacrifice. And so that we do now stand in his presence, mm. measuring up. Yeah. And so it's this, like God just went to such a great length and that's like, you know, Grace is so deep. It's such a beautiful thing. And, and it's so, um, if you talk about the gospel, you've got to talk about grace, right? And Paul even goes as far as to, to call the God, the gospel of grace, you know, it's, it's like the good news of God's grace through Christ. Um, it is central to, you know, our faith and who we are now as new creations of Christ, uh, new creations in Christ. Yes. Because of that grace. Yeah. With the moving analogy, I think, uh, it, I mean, analogies are not designed to be perfect. Yeah, so obviously, wrong. you know, no. you can't really measure up to make it even more over the top. Cause like grace is over the top. Yeah. It's, and again, I, it's for fun, but just for fun. Yeah. It's like you didn't have any friends to ask mm. to help you move. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, this guy shows up that can, he has like 12 trucks. Oh yeah. But he drives all the trucks, <laughs> all the trucks, <laughs> but he shows up and is like, Hey man, I heard you're moving. It's Tesla. I would love no. to, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> However we're going to explain it. I would love to pack up all your stuff for you. Just stand right here. Yeah. And like, uh, I'll wow. talk to you and I'll pack all yeah, your stuff up all. and put it into all my trucks and drive it where you're going. And he's like, he's like, and I'm doing, are you this cool with I, that? You're yeah, good with he's that? Like, cool. And I'm doing this cause I love you. Yeah. Hey man, <laughs> I love you. What? You're like, what? Who are you? <laughs> why did you, what? why? And then he builds the house that you move into. Hey, it's um, like, it's like actually, you know, I know all these things that you're really attached to. Yeah. I got you just like better stuff. Yeah. Oh. Like all the things that you you oh have, like that couch, it's a cool couch, but I got you a better couch. Your bed. I, I got you a better bed. I noticed your car. Um, I got you a better one. You know, I got you a new car. Brand yeah. New. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Over the top. That's, that is like even, that's, that's good. and like that, that's something that comes through in the new Testament a lot with Paul's like <laughs> his unique brand of Greek. Like, mm. oh man. So Greeks love compound words anyway, but like sometimes it's like, all right, man, we get it. Like, Wild. Yeah. It's like, like, it's over, like the top, just, over the top, over the top, over the top. You're smashing like 12 words together. Yes. Like, like one of them is, uh, perisevo, I think is the, is the verb, which means to exceed expectations. Mm. And like, that wasn't good enough. So Paul's like, who per perisevo, which means like it exceeds, it exceeds the expectations. Mm. And like it, one of them is used in one of the verses talking about grace that it's like, it's over the top, over the top. Mm. And it's just like, this wasn't strong enough. So I had to add a couple more prefixes to it wow. to make it bigger. But really like that whole theme, all of scripture is telling the same story just, and then when we get to Jesus, this is like, okay, cool. All these were analogies. Now we have the physical thing yeah. for what this is and what we've been talking about, mm. which is God extending himself for people and saying, just choose me. That's it. Yeah. He, he came, he came to this earth and he yes. did it. He did in a, um, we just, we just talked about it this past Sunday in church. Um, I was, uh, sharing on, um, the virgin birth, mm. sharing on the story of, um, of Christmas in Matthew chapter one and mm. Joseph's perspective, um, and the genealogy. Okay. And yes. I, and I didn't get this, uh, I didn't make this up. Like I got this from Tim Keller. I was reading some, so I try to read broadly and try to learn. And, um, but he, he really makes this point that the power of the genealogy mm. in Matthew chapter one, because everybody knows what's the first, what's Jeff, like what's the first uh, verse in the whole Bible? 
in the beginning, God created the yeah. heavens and the yeah. earth. And most people know that, yeah. right? But if you ask the same people, and now you may know this, but what's the first verse in the New Testament? And Abraham begot Isaac, isn't it? No. Or I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. And this is the genealogy of Jesus. Yeah, and this is ge- okay. the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the there son of Abraham. Yep. Yeah. And and like in, in church, I did this. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, what is the... And you get the all fir- the answers. The first, the first service, somebody read it, and I was like, "Oh, well, I didn't say." You know, I guess it's, oh, that's on me. You know, <laughs> don't and cheat this time. The Just second give me service, I said, "You can't read it," and really, nobody, nobody knows because why? We kind of skip that. You sure. know, a lot of times, sure. like, let's get to the good part. Um, but the point mm-hmm. Tim Keller makes is, you know, if the Christmas story didn't happen, hmm. then we can't even be saved by grace. It's true. Um, if the Christmas story is just a nice legend, a nice story then we're in big trouble because then Jesus is just another teacher who came mm-hmm. and, and we need to try to be better people, you know, based on his teachings. Um, because, um, because law is still in effect then. Yeah. Law is still in effect. And it's Christ came, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And it's the Christmas story that, um, that is that Genesis that, that shows that Christ, no, he really came. He didn't just pop up out of nowhere this was, he was born. He was born mm-hmm. fully God, fully man. Um, but Tim Keller's point about the genealogy was that it anchors the Christmas story in a real time and place. Mm. Whereas many stories start once upon a time, right? True. Or in a galaxy, you know, like a long, long time ago in a <laughs> Somewhere galaxy Somewhere at some point yeah, this happened. Like at some, exactly. But this anchors it in history. Mm. And, um, and, it, and it makes the case that, Christ was really born. Christ came to this earth. God really became um, a man, put on flesh, put on our frame. Emmanuel, God with us. You know, <laughs> you can't see it, but Jeff just pointed to a tattoo. I literally have that tattooed on my arm. Tattooed in the Greek. <laughs> no, this is oh, in the Hebrew. Hebrew. My bad. Emmanuel. Um, yeah, and um, but it's like no, Christ really did come. He, God was really with us. Um, and he did all of that. He went to that great length and that's where the gospel comes in. Even in the Christmas story is that re- in religious thought, we think we need to work hard to get to God. <laughs> we need to do the right things. And even a lot of Christians do the same thing. We think we need to live good lives to measure up, to get to God, to get his, to get his favor. Correct. Right? It's a very um, human thought. It's like a, very. Yeah. And it's, pervasive throughout oh, world religion just literally everywhere and even even people even people that um would say i'm an atheist there is no god mm. their their god little g is success money work what or or even the perfect family whatever whatever that looks like they still find themselves trying to measure up Correct. to some standard yes um to please some other you know being or deity or or conception of Correct. a god. You know, I'll put it another I, way. So you you've seen the first Avengers, right? Yeah. Okay. When Loki's in Germany, and he says, "You all want to be ruled," mm. and everybody's like, "No, we don't," because we're American. Yeah. And like the German guy, the clearly Jewish guy, who was like, you know, yeah, I was ruled once, so I'm not going to be ruled again. And yeah. everybody's like, "Yeah, tell him." Yeah. Loki's right. Yeah, he is. Loki's yeah. right. Yeah. Every human being on the planet is serving something. Yes, exactly. And if you think you're not. You just haven't figured it yeah. out yet. Yeah. You haven't figured out what you're serving. 100%. And back to the Christmas story yes. and um, all religion, all, all, every, we all, we think we, we need to um, work our way to God and achieve, you know, whatever to earn a place or to earn, you know, that favor. But the Christmas story and it's the, and it is the grace of God being expressed, right? Is that it flips it on its head instead of man climbing to God it's God coming down to man, stooping, like you said, yes. in that picture of a of a higher being stooping to a to um, someone lower and um, coming to them and and bestowing and and that's the Christmas story is that Christ came and that that through Christ and that the Christmas story does exist, we can be saved by grace because He did come for us. God went to that length to meet us where we're at and to do what we could never do, and we can now stand in His in his grace. One of the distinctions between the gospel of Jesus and the gospel of his grace versus literally like every other religion that I have found is that every other religion or system, it says exactly what you just said, that it's going to make a bad person into a good person. Mm. My God is not in the habit of making bad people into good people, but he's rather in the habit of making dead people alive people. Yeah. And 
it's a simple thing, but it's really, oh man, like it's really that, that's where it's at. Um, and, and he, everything, it, like you said, it turns it on its head that there's nothing you can do. Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to isogeet a little bit of, um, I don't know if it's Maverick or Elevation's song. It's Gyra. So is that, Gyra, yeah. that's Elevation? Um, I there's so many, cro- there's I crossover. I think they're both. Correct. Uh, there's so much crossover there. That doesn't really matter, but their song about Gyra. Okay. You're never more loved than you are right now. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what the gospel says. You are never more holy than you are right now. Mm. Because the holiness that you have is really not yours. You're yeah. standing in Jesus's holiness. Yeah. And like, it's really easy to take that and then say, cool. Then like, what's the point? I don't do anything. Mm. No, uh, like the entire life of a Christian is allowing the Lord to come in and invade and uh, transform you from the inside out. Yeah. And that goes from like, you know, saving grace to like you were mentioning, like uh, sustaining grace. Yeah. This idea of us. allowing the Lord to do what he wants to do, which is to conform us more into the image of his son. Yeah. Which will make you more holy. It yeah. will make you. But if you make that your goal. Yeah. If your goal is to try to be holy, can you be Jesus? <laughs> nah, bro. Like I can't be Jesus. Nah, you're fall short every Correct. Time. Yeah. And so like, if the goal is not what the goal is supposed to be, then it sets you up for failure because yeah. very quickly it ends up becoming a works game. And like, well, now we're back into everything that we're not supposed to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the holiness movements in the mm. 1950s and don't play cards or go to the movies and don't. I mean, play. Hey man, if like, and, that's what the Holy Spirit is convicting you about, yeah, then like, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. But. Like when you try they made to, a new law, <laughs> correct. When you try to preach conviction to people, yeah, uh, no, it comes off as legalism yeah. because the Holy Spirit might not be doing that in them. Like yeah. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says, it gives an analogy of rain and snow falling to the ground and interacting with it and making things grow and making seed come out and all this. And God says, just like that, wherever my word goes from my mouth, it will do what I want it to do where I send it. Mm. Which implies a couple things that if it's not happening right now for you or whoever this is, that, uh, that's the Lord's timing. Yeah. And so like, rather than preach our convictions at people and say, Hey, look, see, you should be holy. This is where you're deficient. This is where it's not supposed to be. Um, if you make God the center of that, Mm. Hey, look, have you, have you considered what God has done in you and for you and allow the Lord to do what he wants to do anyway? Yeah then all these things will be added and they will fall into place because it's the yeah. Lord doing the action. Yeah. God is God is in charge of our spiritual growth. Yes. 100%. And so often we try to become the masters of our spiritual growth and then by extension, other people's spiritual growth. Yeah. If you just prayed more, you'd be happy. Mm. If you just stopped doing those stupid things you're doing, you'd be happy. If you did all these other things and hey, maybe, maybe for happiness, but like the gospel's goal is not happiness. Mm-hmm. The gospel's goal is revival. And yeah. for breathing in life and becoming a live person because you yeah. were once a dead person. Yeah. And so there's a lot there, but. Yeah. Well, you know, in um, speaking of happiness. Yes. Um, Psalm 34, verse eight. Yes. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. And then it says, blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Mm. And that word blessed. Yes. Has a connotation. Yes. Of I share. Being happy. Yes. Right. Happier to be envied. Yeah. This is but, the ideal man. But notice. It's taking refuge in the Lord. Correct. And he is your happiness. Which, if you see. if you study the next couple verses, it later says, um, "He who seeks the Lord lacks no good thing." The word "thing" is not in the Hebrew. It's lacks no good, lacks Correct. no tov. And what did the Bible just say was was good? Taste and see that the, the Lord, Lord is, good. is good. Correct. So when you seek the Lord, you're not just going to get stuff. Yes. You're going to get him. Correct. You're going to find him and you're going to lack no good because he, he is, is good. the greatest good. Yes. That he, he is enough. He's, he's in fact the standard for all good. Yeah. And he's if enough. it's good, it comes from him. And if it doesn't come from yeah. him, then it ain't no good. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. So, um, detour back to the grace of God. <laughs> I mean, essentially that, but it that is, is like, yeah. this is, that is the, the grace of God is the ability to be with God. Yeah. Wow. And the only way that's achievable is by going to the source and the bridge to our source is Jesus. Like yeah. the way is open. Correct. hundred percent. Yes. There not Gandalf. No. The way is not shut. <laughs> <laughs> the way is open. And uh, Mandalorian, this is the way. <laughs> this, this is, he is the way it's true. This is the way. Yeah. So uh, I love that in, cause I just looked it up while you were talking about it. Uh, 
the word there for to take refuge is in Hebrew. It literally, it means to like to run for your life. <laughs> All right. This is the place that you run to your life and blessed happy is the man who makes the Lord what he runs for his life to, yeah. which gets weird in English, but like yeah. refuge, I understand why they chose it. Yeah. But you know, there's a genuine desperation. Yes. He is, yes. he is what matters most. If you still think there's another option out there as a human being, you're going to choose another option. Because while you have other options to choose, you're going to exhaust all your options. Yeah. And like everybody who has found the Lord to be his refuge, I don't need to know your story because it's my story. Cause it's the same story mm. that you were in the lowest spot in your life, whatever, however you got there, not important. You were at the lowest place and you said, all right, God, I need you to show up. And what does he do? He comes with 12 trucks and says, Hey man, I hear you're trying to move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would like to move for you. Also, I'm going to give you way better stuff. Yeah. You cool with that? All right, well, let's I'm go. Gonna take care of you. Yes. The need. Yes. Um, yeah, it is. And it's his grace. He just, he, he, he's making those moves. He is. Absolutely. He is helping us. He is empowering us. He is working on our behalf and, and we need to humble ourselves and receive what he is mm, doing. Humble. And, and what a great word. Don't talk about it. Okay. No, cause uh, <laughs> guys, this we, is going to be a two parter because okay. we're going to, we're going to talk um, at least a two-parter, maybe a three-parter. I'm cool with that. But um, we're going to talk a little bit more about grace and some different angles and sustaining grace mm. specifically, how um, the grace of God is not a one-time event that Christ died on the cross for us. That's the grace of God. We're saved by grace through faith. That's, there's a saving grace. There's grace, like what, what he did, what he's already done for us, but he's still extending himself on our behalf to help us to live like Christ, to, to live our lives in a way that pleases him, to empower us and to enable us. Um, it's, it's not about us now just trying really hard to be good because Christ died for us because we get into the same mode of Correct. measuring up. Um, but yeah, so, 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 hold, so hold before we like, hold your thoughts. yeah, before we just like rolled right into that, I just wanted to put, pump the brakes. There's going to be more. Um, do you have any other, any other final thoughts on grace, big picture concept? Mm. Uh, so when you get into like one of the things that you and I talked about was Romans five. Okay. So like, this is where Paul is talking about foundational, this foundational philosophical concepts mm. of grace. And, uh, you gotta remember for Paul and like for his letters, um, I think it's first Peter three sixteen. It's either first or second. It doesn't really matter where Peter is talking about the letters of Paul. And he says, um, he says Peter. some things, it's yeah. second Peter he says, he says some things that are hard to understand Yeah. and the ignorant and the, I forget the arrogant, I forget the other adjective, uh, twist his words mm. as they do with all, all other scriptures, scriptures yeah. to their own destruction. Mm. So when you're reading, like Paul is a heady guy, like he gets into like some pretty philosophical ideology. Yeah, he's just like, well, he's going all over the place. And, where, <laughs> and one of the things and I love about him is- where's he getting this stuff? You're like, <laughs> where is he? What are you, Paul, what? But he had, he had these revelations with Christ. Correct. He spent yeah. like years of his life literally just, just being with the Lord, hanging out with Jesus and getting all this stuff yeah. and then going and teaching all that. And so uh, what is time to a timeless being? Irrelevant. So, um, Essentially, whenever we're reading, like, I can't uh, like disacknowledge it enough. It's not just information. It's not a recipe. Mm -hmm. Like scripture is a living breathing because it's literally, it is Jesus. Yeah. So um, sometimes I think we uh, get the cart ahead of the horse. Like whenever I'm praying or whenever I'm about to read something, especially if it's like something that I'm not aware of, or I think I don't have enough understanding about it, just asking the Lord to, can you illuminate this for me? Mm. And believing that he's going to do it because uh, some of the things that, are talked about like, like Romans five, he gets into some tracks there. He gets into some areas yeah. where it's like, Hmm. Huh? So, uh, linguistically speaking to tie it back, it's a one time thing that he, it's a one time thing that he's repeated over and over and over again mm. in the Bible. And then he came to a specific point where he did it on earth through Jesus. And that is, uh, now standing in the gap for us, I guess is the kind yeah. of the best way I can say it. Like the idea with to stoop down, that he stooped down literally into humanity and made all the things that we couldn't being fully human. And because of that, what he stooped down into for us, that we stand in his place. And it really like, uh, it's, it's kind of reciprocal. Mm. 
in the idea that, uh, which you can see in Romans 5 too, that we stand in the grace that Jesus put for us. And that um, if you're not careful and like really seeking the Lord, it's easy to step out of that and to step, like you said, like into so many other things, what it looks like legalism and like, you know, works yeah. and all the things and like, wham, I am, I'm way over here. How did I get over here? Yeah. Cause you weren't watching where you were standing. So yeah. like it's a foundation for us that has to uh, be foundation so that we yeah. can continue. Well, well, it sounds like, tell me, it sounds like we need to slow things down. <laughs> yes. Slow the pace of our lives down mm -hmm. sometimes. And um, we need to, humble ourselves. Well, we won't go into that. Correct. I will hold my tongue. <laughs> yeah. But, but we humble ourselves and saying, I need help. God help You're me. You're making this really hard not to say it. Right <laughs> <on time. laughs> and, and, um, and cultivating a practice in our lives. Again, I love silence and solitude, contemplative mm. prayer, where we slow down, we take the time to be with Jesus. And that's why I think one of the powerful things about silence and solitude is that you take, you carve out that time and you sit with the Lord and you say, here I am, God, I need you. And you could sit in silence, not hear anything, not feel anything, nothing crazy happens, but you sat with the Lord. And I will tell you what, you are, you are in a very real way receiving his grace mm. because you are stopping and saying, God, I need you. I want you. I love you. And in that moment, God is working, whether you feel it or not. And that's one of the things on this podcast, Jeff, that I emphasize over and over. When we say experience God, a lot of times it jumps, our minds jump to, it's got to be a big experience. Sure, sure. It's got to be, the, the sky's got to crack. And then we get lots of people who feel broken, mm. like there's something wrong with me because God isn't showing up and showing off. Mm. on a regular basis. Like it's not, it's like, I'm not having these Elijah moments on the mountaintop oh, with Baal. I'm not so glad you said it. Yeah. Like where did Elijah hear the voice of the Lord? In the, in silence. the silence. Yes. In the yeah. We've talked about that. I think, true. I think I talked about it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Um, but that is 100% true Yeah, uh, because in our minds, and I think we've got the American, the American dream lodged sure, in our hearts sure. and our brains. Bigger is better. Mm. Um, external, is more important than internal. And mm. we, to be successful Christians, and if as soon as we say oh. we want to experience God, it has to be these picturesque, mountaintop, open heaven, in, insane experiences. But the reality is every person will probably have a dozen or two, maybe even less, of big encounters that I would call, you know, like ma major experience. I, I share this story a lot on the podcast, Jeff. Um, when I was a teenager, I was at a youth retreat. I was at the altar praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I, my eyes were closed. And I felt a hand on my chest. Okay. And I opened my eyes, no one in front of me, no one walking away to my left or to my right. And I believe in that moment, it was a very trans, the fruit was good. Okay. It was a very transformational moment in my life. Mm. But when I come downstairs to pray every morning, I'm not getting pinned to the ground by God, <laughs> you know, every day that it's just like, that's what it is mm. on the average. Um, and th this is the episode we talked about mundane moments. You mm. know, what about the mundane? What about the average day? What does it look like in between those big moments? Well, it's chill. It's a lot more quiet. It's a lot more humble. It's, you know, God, God may say something to you. He may not. You may feel something, you may not, but none of those things impact the reality of the moment that you are with the Lord. Mm. And when you slow down to be with God, and even if you sit there for five minutes um, and you take that time and say, God, I need you, and you just wait in silence, a lot of times feelings or thoughts will come up, interact with those, so, you know, allow the Holy Spirit into those. A lot of times nothing happens. And then you do your prayer, your, your other prayers, you read your scripture. I like to start in that place where I'm slowing down to be with the Lord. And I believe very strongly that I, I tap into the grace of God. That it's almost like, like you said, is that that action 
and he continues that action. And it's like, it's the grace of God's just reverberating through all time and space. And it's like, are we getting in the stream, you know, yeah. um, and receiving what he has done for us and is continuing to offer and invite us into, are we receiving that? And that's why I really love to just. I, there's so much I want to say. I'm just, yeah. I'm just yeah, holding we, it in. But we got to, we got to, yeah, we got to, we're going to wrap this I agree. episode I up. Agree. Um, and, oh, uh, man. Jeff, Jeff will be back. Um, yeah. cause yeah. I think that we need another, another part to this. So like we do in every, every episode, we want to give you an opportunity to receive from God, to slow down and practice what we preach, what we talk about here. And we want to give you an opportunity to, um, to just be still before the Lord, to receive his grace, to receive what Christ has done for you, receive God's love and to um, enjoy him. So I'm gonna pray and then we're just gonna give a space for about a minute or so for you to be with, um, in the Lord's presence. So God, I just thank you for every person that's listening to this podcast. I thank you, God, for your love and for your grace. God, I just ask that right now we remember that you are here, that you would open our hearts and our eyes to see you and know you, to love you and enjoy you. God, we humble ourselves right now. We receive your grace. We need you. We need your help, Lord. Help us to be deeply rooted and anchored in your grace, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And we wait amen. on you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Uh, thank you for you. God, I bless your name that you are the good and holy King of the universe, Lord, that you have stepped down into us and into time for us, God, and for your behalf. And I thank you for the goodness that you extend so lovingly over and over again. Lord, I, uh, I ask that you would help us, give us your eyes to see. Give us your eyes to see, God, and give us your heart to understand um, in our heart, God. Thank you for your faithfulness and that you are uh, a faithful God, that you will keep your promises, Lord, that you will fulfill what you have promised to us, God, to transform us from the inside out, to replace our heart of stone with a heart of flesh with your law written on it, God, and that we would be a reflection of you and a testament to the world around us. Thank you for all that you're doing in us and for us on our behalf continually, Lord, the things that we see and that we don't because God, they are many. I love you and I thank you. And I thank you that I can love you because you loved us first. Pray all these things in the name and blood of Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. 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 Now, again, just to remind you, you can do that any day. All any, day, every day. All day, all the time. Um, praying without ceasing, mm. I think is not so much, ah, praying going crazy for all day long um but it is a posture it is a an intimacy um and we want to cultivate in our lives where we are slowing down being with the lord and letting everything else flow out of that so i just encourage you to make that space in your life amen, amen. well jeff thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week thanks for um, having me man and it's it, been really fun yeah definitely and um and again jeff has his own podcast and it is Jesus didn't speak English. Jesus, we're actually recording yeah. episode six tomorrow. So whenever that is, you know, uh, yeah, this is, yeah. we're recording this. Yeah, that's actually time. true. That's true. So like coming soon to a podcast host near yeah. you episode yeah. six. Yeah. So, and if you think we went deep on this, um, oh, Jeff, buckle up buttercup. Jeff, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, like they they make like they don't even jump into the deep end. They just like find a black hole and just get sucked right in. <laughs> We're hanging out in the uh, Laurentian abyss over in the ocean. <laughs> Down there in the depths. Yeah, man, they go, they go. It's forward, pound cake, so. man. It is. Uh, it's cake. very dense. It's yeah. meatloaf. Um, um, but that's one of the things that I appreciate yeah. about you, Jeff, is that Thank um, you. is that you study, you learn, and you share, and um, and uh, that is a that is a good thing. And study, learn, and share. I'm gonna try to remember those because, like, I think that ties in with sustaining grace. Yeah, <laughs> and I would love to talk about that for a yeah. second okay, when we talk don't, next time. Don't forget it. But don't yes, forget it. Study, learn, so, and share. Yeah. So again, thank you for joining us on the podcast, Taste and See. Um, it's uh, it is my prayer, and um, and uh, Jared's out there praying somewhere too um, that uh, that you guys will grow and learn to taste and see that the Lord is good in every area of your life, um, knowing Him deeply and being with him and letting everything else flow out of that as you go about your day. And, um, and it is always a privilege to be here with you. And as always, uh, Taste and See is sponsored by VYG Students. It's a local youth group in the South Jersey area. Uh, if you want more full-length sermons and um, other information about our youth ministry, you can go to vygstudents.com. The link is in the show notes. And oftentimes on Wednesday nights, we are going live at 7.15 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. And the link is vygstudents.com slash live. Again, that is in the show notes. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is Andrew. This has been Jeff. This has been Jeff. See you next time. Till next time.